Hello, everybody. Welcome to the PWO All Out Prediction Show. Of course, you have Wild Thing, Mike DeShazo, right here with me. Uh, and as always, I'm your host, Matt. We're here to talk all out coming up this weekend. And we have a, f- a pretty full show, I'm not going to lie. Uh, unfortunately, we do have one match that is canceled. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just get that out of the way now. Uh, Andrade versus Pac has been canceled due to travel issues. Apparently, Pac is having trouble traveling, uh, I think, back from uh, England, but I'm not positive from where. But uh, apparently, it's Pac with the travel. I think someone's Wi-Fi dropped. What's up? Whoa. You might be having some. Oh, Mike, can you hear me? Mike? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Everything just kind of started working better again. All right. I think my Wi-Fi dropped that I was connected to. I'm uh, I'm going to blame WWE because they don't want us talking the show. <sighs> I had to get my one in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so... Uh, I'm keeping it cordial. <laughs> you're a better man than me. Uh, For once in my life. <laughs> so uh, here's where Andrade versus Pac being canceled and moved to a future episode of Rampage uh, is nice in that the Women's Casino Battle Royale is now on the main show instead of the buyout. Um, so our buyout match is Orange Cassidy, Chuck Taylor, Wheeler Yuta, and Jurassic Express versus the Hardy family organization, Matt Hardy, Private Party, and TH2 in a 10-man tag team match. Uh, Mike, what you thinking here? Who, who you got? I'm going to go with the uh, the best friends in Jurassic Express winning this. I feel like uh, the Orange Cassidy HFO feud has run its course a long time ago, and I feel like this is a good blow-off match for it. And HFO could then switch into a feud with Jurassic Express, possibly. I could see it. I also have uh, uh, Team Babyface here. <laughs> um, they, uh, I, I just, I don't see how you're going to have Jungle Boy on this card and not win, as well as uh, Orange Cast. You have them both in the same match on the same side. This is an easy decision, I think. Yeah. Um, all right, to what I think will probably be the open now is the 21 Women Casino Battle Royale, who we know is currently in it. Nyla Rose, Thunder Rosa, The Bunny, Big Swole, Julia Hart, Tay Conti, Diamante, Penelope Ford, Red Velvet, Hikaru Shida, Emi Sakura, Jade Cargill, Kiara Hogan, Abaddon, Layla Hurst, Killian King, Rebel, Jamie Hayter, Anna J, Riho, and there is one more woman who has yet to be announced. That is the list I have as well. I was looking at it there as you were reading the names. I think we're in the same place here. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Maybe. So I'm going to ask you, A, who's the mystery woman? And B, who is uh, winning? Well, the mystery woman is none other than Ruby Soho. And I can't wait to hear that music hit, Rancid and Ruby Soho playing and her walk down the ring. I would like to think she's the one who's going to win this, but I don't think putting her into a title feud right away makes sense. In my opinion, what makes sense and would make for a better storyline is Rebel or Jamie Hayter winning. And I think Jamie Hayter is going to win. Okay. Do you think they actually go in for the title match against uh, Britt Baker? I think Jamie Hayter would, Rebel wouldn't. Okay. Uh, so hear me out on this. Uh, I think Ruby Soho is going to wait until New York to show up. I don't. I don't. I haven't checked uh, Fightful or anything. Typically, I'm really good about that, but today has not been the day for me to keep track of it. Uh, but I, I. I don't know why I had it in my head that she's going to debut uh, at the New York show. Um, I think there's something in her vignettes also that kind of made me think that, but, uh, so like her last vignette with that destination and the seven empty letters or however many it was spells out Chicago. Yeah. And that's fair. I could see it. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking maybe we don't have her in the battle Royale. 
because I think she has to win it if she's there. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's Mickey James after coming off of uh, Empower this past weekend. Like um, and inevitably, I think the winner is going to be Thunder Rosa. Thunder. Um, I, I have a dark horse person who I would really like to win because I think it would make sense storyline wise uh, being Big Swole. Um, I think a, a rematch between Swole and Britt Baker could be really good, maybe with Baker going over this time. Mm-hmm. Um, but I definitely think this is Thunder Rosa, Thunder Rosa's match. Thunder Rosa won the last match against Britt Baker. So maybe this is Britt Baker getting her win back here. I mean, if we get Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa, maybe Dave Meltzer will actually finally give a women's match five stars. Did he not give the. Uh, I think it was 4.75. Just give it to him at that point. I'm sorry. God. That was the best woman's match I've ever seen. And he didn't. It was real. He's not the gospel, as Jeff the Pierce Hall would say about something. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I, I agree. Yeah, just, just give that match five stars. And I, I'd be very okay with that. I think Swole would be another good one. Um, just out of everyone there, I think those two stick out the most for me. Of course, we can always go Hikaru Shida round two. Um, mm-hmm. But I think we want to wait on that. I think we're going to slow burn Shida back to the top. I um, think we're slow burning Shida into a heel as well. You watch Elevation and Dark, she's very, using a lot of heelish tactics. Yeah, maybe a little bit more uh, either determined or frustrated. Yeah. I'm all about it. I'm very excited, actually. This this show is actually going to be incredible. We haven't even gotten into, like, the, the headliners that uh, they have set up here, but we're going to get through the next two matches, and then it's going to be huge match after huge match. Uh, all right, up next, John Moxley versus Satoshi Kojima. Uh, I, I think this is an easy one. I'm not going to lie. Um, yeah. I think this is John Moxley's win. Um I think the original plan was Tanahashi. And I think uh, some of the recent COVID outbreaks in Japan changed that, which is unfortunate, but getting Kojima, uh, uh, he's done some good work on Twitter, I think, to really kind of build this match there. Uh, A lot of people have fallen in love with uh, his Twitter persona, uh, mainly the fact that he loves bread. (laughs) So uh, I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Kojima's really pushing that, like, Hey, I'm not done yet. I'm not retired yet. I still got great matches in me. I think him and John Moxley will have a fantastic match. Yeah, I agree. I think John Moxley's going over here. I mean, Kojima is a two-time IWGP champion or heavyweight champion. Um, he's just not the big name that Americans who are new to New Japan or is used to. Like, if it was Ace coming over here. But he's not able to make it because they've got to have matches for their shows in Japan, and so many of their guys are sick. So it makes sense to keep him over there and have him do a match. Whereas you can bring over a legend and put him against Moxley, have Moxley go over to build up that credibility. Yeah, it doesn't hurt Kojima losing to Moxley, I don't think. Mm -hmm. I think Um, it's going to be a great match. Yeah, I agree. Um, Maybe the most predictable of every match on here. Uh, But... I, I think this one is more predictable. Uh, I, I'm, I think it's the same one we're thinking of, but I think just a number of people have been pushing that the opposite might happen here. Paul White versus QT Marshall here. Marshall's going to be coming out with Aaron Solo and Nick Camarado. Uh, this is coming right off the ends of the gun club turning on Big Show. And I don't, they don't necessarily align themselves with the factory, um, but they did smash Big Show in the hip with a chair. Uh, Big Show, obviously. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Paul White. I gotta stop doing that. Uh, it, it's so ingrained in me. It's an easy mistake. Um, I'm, uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and apologize because I know someone's gonna rip me for it. I'm, I'm sorry. It's, it's been the Big Show for so many years of my life. I'm, I'm still, I'm still converting to Paul White. Uh, I remember when he debuted as the Giant's son. Yeah, yeah, as the Giant. <laughs> Um, God, I remember him and Hulk Hogan in their horrible, horrible monster truck match. The Taskmaster debuting him. Um, so I think QT Marshall's winning this. I, I do too. 
I think QT Marshall is going to win with help from the gun club, setting up a Billy Gunn versus Paul White legends kind of feud. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Maybe they got to pull off the whole Billy Gunn never got the, uh, the, the respect he deserved. I could see that. I'd be very okay with that. Mm-hmm. Don't be surprised if we get a vignette and it cuts to QT Marshall in the ring while Paul White's music is playing. Because, I mean, yeah. that's the bit they're doing. They're, they're, it's like he's getting disrespected left and right. It's a storyline. I mean, <laughs> um, all right. Next up, Chris Jericho versus MJF. And if Chris Jericho loses, he must retire from in ring competition in AEW. Whew, this one is hard. It's really, really hard. This is um, the hardest match of the card. Yeah, actually, I do think so. Um, but I, I got to stick with my guts here. I, <sighs> so here's my thing. Jim Ross crying in the ring on Dynamite when he introduced Chris Jericho. tells me that this should probably be Jericho's last match. Mm-hmm. I've been on that train since this match was announced. I said it in the group chat. <laughs> I got to tell you, someone got in my ear and was like, what if that was all on purpose to make you think he's going? <laughs> and now I'm sitting here like, Jericho's really going to go 0-4 against MJF? So for the sake of maybe I'm going to get one wrong here, I'm going to go Chris Jericho winning. Um, I, I think it's probably time, and I think he's I, – I never want to see Chris Jericho stop wrestling, honestly. Um, but I definitely think it, it's coming, unfortunately. I, I don't know if it's here yet. This, this would be a great way to kind of do it, but – I don't know, man, going 0-4 against MJF would be huge. So I am uh, I'm sticking to my guns on this. It's MJF who's going to win. Um, I think this is actually the perfect guy to retire um, Jericho. This MJF is so protected, unless there's some sort of shenanigans that happens to push Jericho to the win. And, you know, I am – I'm a huge Jericho fan. I've been a Jericho fan for 25 plus years, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think moving him to commentary makes sense. Uh, maybe more of a backstage role too, because he's he's got this knowledge. It's just wealth of knowledge and he's so good on the mic. But I think MJF, yeah, is, yeah I mean, MJF is so protected. I think MJF is going over. MJF's going to win unless there is shenanigans from the inner circle. But I don't, the only guy who still wears his inner circle gear is Sammy Guevara. Who doesn't have a match? Yeah, Pride and Powerful came out with their own, like, vest. I mean, it was still a vest, but it was not an inner circle vest. I think the inner circle's done. Jericho, this is his his in-ring retirement match, and I, I will be shoot upset when he loses. <laughs> I yeah, will. I'll cry. I'll definitely yeah. cry into my Lou Malnati's pizza. Oh, I will... I'll cry into uh, my beard when I'm watching at some point during my national party. <laughs> um, all right. Miro versus Eddie Kingston for the TNT championship. Okay. I think this has to be Miro. But one of two things I think is going to happen. I, I, I think Eddie's either going to win it in New York in queens um yeah i i have two title changes set for that location so um but uh i know which two titles you're thinking of too now that i think about it yeah probably (laughs) um but god I, i can't really count out eddie kingston because he's done some of the best work of his career and i wouldn't be surprised if this was the the rub they give him like, thank you for being the locker room leader. Mm. So you're going Kingston or? Uh, I think I'm going to go Miro. Yeah. But but this one is hard. It is very hard. This is another one of the harder matches to pick. Um, 
but also if you think about it, it's easier to pick. I'm going Miro here. Um, I also think at some point Miro's hot wife debuts. <laughs> I think that's happening this weekend. I, I know it is this weekend. I think it's going to – she's either coming out with him or she's going to come out in the middle of the match and distract Kingsley. Oh, my God. What if she comes out as the Mother Mary? Oh, Oh my God, yeah. the heat, the heat. But yeah, I think she's going to show up. It's either going to be in the beginning or the middle of the match. Um, but yeah, I uh, I agree with you. Um, Miro's winning. And the perfect time to put the strap on Kingston, the title on Kingston, is that grand Means. plan. Yeah. Oh my God. It, and I know the other one you're thinking of, and it also makes all the sense in the world. It's the, it's the next match on the card. Yep. Young Bucks versus Lucha Bros for the tag titles in a steel cage match. Um, I've had several conversations about this, and a lot of people are thinking that the Lucha Bros have to go over here. Um, and my argument for that is Andrade is still here. He, uh, he may not have a match now, but he can still be there. Uh, and he's really been pushing the fact that the Lucha Bros aren't going to be able to win a title as long as they're associated with PAC. I really, I really think that line from from their their segments is gonna kind of get demonstrated here. I don't know if it's gonna be, um, maybe we don't go evil. Maybe we maybe we don't do uh, something heelish that would win the belt or something. Um, maybe them just being soft. Um, but I think the young bucks rotate here. Here's my other thing too. They were talking about how. Brandon Cutler can't interfere in this match. Here's my thing. He has a coolant spray can. <laughs> telling me the steel cage is not is going to be able to stop these gas particles. Are we, are we covering it with plexiglass too? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he used it perfectly in that, that. I think that segment last night in the show was great. I think yeah, the I loved work amazing in that last segment. Um, but yeah, he's going to use the scan, the scan, the, the spray can. Um, yeah, I'm with you too. The Young Bucks are going to win this. Um, I don't even think this was meant to be the match originally. But, um, you know, Hangman's baby on the way kind of changed things up. So, like, that, that five-man match that they had for the, the, you know, if Hangman won, he got a title shot and Dark Order got a title shot. I think that kind of, like, kind of changed things up. And I think Young Bucks are going to win this. But their time is coming to an end, and I think Grand Slam is their time that is ending. Yeah. I'm right there with you in that lock and step. And I, I'm pretty sure we both have the same idea who's going to win it. Um, I, I got a feeling Young Bucks are winning here. And uh, maybe Pride and Powerful going to get their opportunity in yep. Queens. <laughs> it, I mean, it makes the most sense on the planet. I, I think, A, they need it more than Lucha Bros. Mm-hmm. Um, and B, uh, I just, I just think PMP needs this win more. Um, I'd also love to see FTR and PMP have a number one contenders match. I said that last night in our discord and I I I thousand percent agree a thousand percent, like throw it on the card here somewhere. I don't know where, because there's really no match here that you can really take time away from, I think. Um, but maybe just next swing on dynamite or something, something, we haven't even gotten to like some of the, the, the rumored surprises set for this show um, or anything of the sort. We've literally only covered these matches, but the, the number of rumors around people showing up as well is just incredible. We're going to have to cover that after we hit main event. Um, yeah. I apologize. They're popping up on my phone as we speak. Um, and I, like, I like this bit where AEW is not necessarily hiding this stuff anymore. Like they did yeah. with uh, CM Punk. They, they, they want to make it a surprise, but they don't want it to be a surprise. And that was just kind of their plan they went with. And I like it. I mean, I, I do love to be the surprise, be surprised, but also kind of knowing but not knowing how it's going to happen is great too. I, I hate to be this guy. Um, Edge returning at the Royal Rumble was fantastic, and you could afford it to be a surprise because it's the Royal Rumble. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, CM Punk showing up at Rampage for the second show that is averaging, you know, anywhere from 750,000 to 800,000, uh, typical in ratings. 
uh, he shows up and it's an increase of anywhere from five to 400,000. Like it, it, it makes sense why you kind of, Hey, it's happening. Do also it. Time slot. You know? Um, yeah. That time slot's brutal. Um, as as just, just staying awake for it. I hate saying that. I, I love rampage. It's been very good so far. Um, but man, staying up until 11 has been rough. I'm, I realize I'm getting old. <laughs> Man, I'm older than you by like 12 years. So it's not like right me. <laughs> All right. I have, the only, only qualm I have with Rampage is the match selection. I feel like they they put the hottest part of the show in the beginning, and the crowd seems to die out as it goes on. But also, you got to think like a lot of those shows are filmed like directly after Dynamite, so it's like it is legitimately 10 o'clock at night when they're doing this. It. This past one with uh, Giannis was the very first one that was actually taped. The other two were live. Yeah. Um, but yeah. This week will be live. <laughs> yep. It's going to be a lot of fun too. I'm mm-hmm. excited. I'm, I'm hoping we're not getting anything too crazy so that our, our, our predictions here are thrown off completely. Gosh. <laughs> um, all right. Up next, Brit, sorry, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD with Rebel, uh, faces Chris Statlander defending her AW Women's World Championship. And I think this may be the second easiest match on the card for me. It's the doctor. Doctor's in. Oh, it's absolutely Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. I mean, I thought this was the easiest match to predict on the card, in my opinion. That's fair. There's, there's been little to no build for it. And that's unfortunate because the card or the roster is so stacked. And you know, Britt Baker's been doing her own thing. But yeah, there's been like no build for this. Yeah, I mean, you needed, I hate saying this, you needed uh, Baker to have that big moment on that first night of Rampage. So you needed title defense. You needed to build that up for a couple weeks. Um, but that has kind of left us a little handicapped here setting up for the next match. Um, and I, I like Statlander. Hopefully she uh, looks real good in defeat. Yeah. I mean, I thought right. will. The match that I think most people are interested in Darby Allen versus CM Punk. CM Punk wrestling for the first time in seven years in Chicago. Um, it, it's Punk. It's Punk. I refuse to uh, be be told by others that Darby Allen's beating CM Punk in his first match in seven years. I refuse. I will actually be upset. I wouldn't be upset if the way that Darby wins is um, heelish. Uh, if Sting, who said that he's not going to be ringside, comes out and, I don't know, hits Punk with a scorpion death drop while the ref is distracted somehow. Um, which I went through my head thinking that last night. And, like, I, I pushed and pulled myself around trying to figure out if that would happen. I don't think it will because I don't think um, – the brass at AEW wants to make Darby a heel. Yeah. I like Darby. I don't like how he's been pushed right away. Yep. But I do like him. I think his work work rate is incredible. His bumps he takes is incredible. Yeah. He's gonna look I don't think he's losing. winning. I think CM Punk is gonna win this. I think CM Punk has to win this. Agreed. Um but yeah, I I think CM Punk is winning with the caveat of even though my pick is punk. But the caveat is that Darby turns heel with Sting's help, then Darby's winning. But I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I would actually tell you that I wouldn't be surprised if we have a six-man tag here coming up in the next few weeks of CM Punk, Darby Allen, and Sting versus 2.0 and Danny Garcia. Gosh, 2.0. I, they I, are incredible heels. They have been elevated okay. more than they were at the other brand. I love 2.0 so much. I can't emphasize that enough. I, there's a thing there where uh, Matt Lee cut in his promo yesterday and someone said, best like, he just did a line of coke, didn't he? <laughs> I think he was hanging out with like the Macho Man or uh, Ultimate Warrior before. The, the energy. I love it. The, he did a seance in the back while the, uh, the elite, <laughs> he joined in with the elite and did a seance, you know. Hey, see where I went there. <laughs> oh, I do, I do, because that's going to be our topic after our main event here. Kenny Omega defending the AEW World Championship versus Christian Cage. Christian 
having just won the impact title off of Kenny Omega, um, you guys should already know the decision. Oh yeah. It's Kenny Omega. It's Kenny Omega. Uh, yeah. because he can't lose the belt till he loses it to Hangman, and I refuse to hear anyone say otherwise. I am lockstep with you on that. I, I think this will be a fun match. I think the beatdown in the cage on Wednesday had to happen to give uh, Christian some bit of sympathy. Otherwise, Christian was probably going to get booed out of the stadium, I think. Um, and, and it's by no means a knock on Christian. Um, but I just think Kenny Omega, the the beloved worker in professional wrestling in Chicago where work rate is king, <laughs> like he, 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 I hate I hate saying it, Christian never stood a chance. Yeah, I mean it's Kenny Omega all the way, and I uh, I think they're gonna have a good match because yeah, Kenny Omega is just that good. Um, He's playing this little uh, shithead heel so well. And then, I'm, I mean, he's also been the baby face. So he's just really good at it. But, yeah, it's Omega's going over here. Um, just like you said, Omega's not dropping the title until he drops it to Adam Page. Whatever. I think it's going to be full gear. I also agree because it's one, uh, well, one calendar year in terms of pay-per-views since uh, Kenny beat him to become the number one contender. Also, it's – Full Gear is named after Adam Page. Yeah, it just makes too much sense. There's just too many dots. I also too think much smoke to not be fire. There's going to be a debut after Kenny Omega wins this too. Ah, uh, do you think? I think, I think as soon as he's done, Kenny Omega is going to grab the mic and say something like, "Now I've beaten everyone," and then the final countdown drops. Ah, uh, man. Okay, so so let's go ahead and do this. Because there's been three to four names rumored to be debuting slash showing up at All Out. One of them already mentioned, Ruby Soho. Um, absolutely would love to see her. Uh, formerly Ruby Riot, fantastic wrestler. Um, these vignettes that she has put out have been, I think, maybe some of my favorites that I've seen uh, on social media. They've been really good. Um, up next... And, and obviously this one's been heavily rumored. It's been discussed several times. Uh, Daniel Bryan, Bryan Danielson, the American Dragon, whatever you're trying to call him now, uh, has been heavily, heavily rumored to AEW now for a while. Um, some people had said it was uh, set for New York, Queens, um, but a lot of people have now said that's been moved forward to All Out. Um I've seen some people suggest that maybe he uh, inserts himself into the TNT title Ooh. and establishes that as the work rate title. Which I, I, I can agree with because it has been between Cody, Brody Lee, Darby, and now Miro, yeah. Granted, Miro has just been murking guys, but... But he's, he is uh, giving shots to Lee Johnson, giving shots to uh, Fuego Del Sol, um, God. I mean, even with, even beforehand, Cody was doing it. Um, Darby did it. Brody did it. Yeah. It's always been the title about, like, elevating people, like giving them a shot and letting them shine. Like, when Miro squashed uh, Fuego, Fuego, he also let Fuego get in a decent amount of offense and, like, show what Fuego can do. And now if you've been watching Elevation, like, Ella, this past episode where it was uh, Fuego and Sammy, you kind of got to see really what Fuego is capable of. Yeah. Um, and, and I liked that. I liked how they did that stuff with Fuego. Mm -hmm. um, all right. <laughs> now, the next two, I guess, are our long shots, but maybe they're not so long. I mean, Britt Baker has teased Adam Cole, uh, fresh off of his, the expiration of his contract, showing up at All Out, uh, having signed with AEW. This would be uh, pretty big news. It hasn't hit any kind of dirt sheet yet fight foot select hasn't talked about it yet um last we had heard on adam cole was ww uh, officials had told uh the rest of the roster that adam cole is not currently with the roster um and that's really been it there's been nothing this week yeah i am um, 
I think this is one debut they want to kind of keep secret as best they can. Because um, you think about it, like a month and a half ago, that Brian Danielson and CM Punk news came out back to back. So and I it think never that, stopped. Yeah, and it never stopped. I think this is one that, like, AEW has probably already signed him and they're just trying to figure out how to debut. Because he's a free agent. He can go wherever he wants as of last Saturday. I would I would hate saying this. I would almost think he is the next guy after uh Cage. Now that would that would throw a lot of wrenches in rankings. Um but uh, I mean the fact that Kenny Omega gave the order to kill him uh on BT is the and, longest of storytelling right there. That's what I'm saying. I mean, but he he was the one who kicked him out of Bullet Club, kicked him out of the elite. Yeah. Um I mean, it is years upon years worth of storylines uh, that you could capitalize on that's there and that they've openly uh, hinted at on social media. You know, a lot of times when these guys hint at something, unless, I mean, the whole Marty Skrull stuff they'd done when it turned out they were trying to get Marty Jannetty, but yeah, uh, they don't like a lot of times hint at something for nothing. Unless they've got a rib they're going to do to the fans or they're dead serious. Yeah, it's pretty typically they are, they're pretty spot on with delivering what they promise. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm very curious to see. Now, this last one might be the longest shot. Um, and that is the rumor of Bray Wyatt debuting it all out. Now, a lot of us have sat here and we've pointed at 90 day. Uh, no compete clause um, and that's been rebuttaled with Malachi Blacks was shortened other wrestlers have been shortened and uh, it won't it, it won't hold up in a court of law I am I don't think it's going to be Bray I think I think first off he's content to let his 90 days run because Malachi Black was a clerical error by the um, and I think it makes more sense to have wherever um, Bray Wyatt goes because his contract's up like the day before Halloween or whatever. Mm-hmm. I think it makes more sense to have, he would rather have his coming out party debut around that time for how his characters have been, whether it's the cult leader or the fiend or the Mr. Rogers, Bray Wyatt. I think it makes more sense for him to debut around that time. Not Husky Harris though. Huskus, Huskus the pig. <laughs> but he has teased that the cult of Wyndham is coming. And I think that is going to be his next gimmick. I would tell you, and, and this is where I'm at, um, they've hinted on past AEWs recently of uh, the Dark Order struggling to stay together and some infighting, Evil Uno struggling to be at the helm uh, with the... Uh, with the loss of Brody Lee. Mm-hmm. So I, I've been saying if anyone could take over the Dark Order, you know, it's the guy who was considered family to Brody Lee. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I hate saying it. It's almost like he's the only guy really who could. I still want to say when Hangman comes back, he brings them back together. I think that makes a lot of sense. That's, that's just me putting like, how a lot of how like the millennial anxious cowboy is and hangman is and how sometimes how my brain works kind of how yeah. I would do it. But also, I mean, the whole connection of Wyndham and, uh, and Brody. Brody Lee, I mean, that makes, God, it makes the, all the sense in the world. I hate saying it. Uh, maybe we get a split in the dark order because of it. I, maybe we get the guys who line up with hangman. Maybe we get the guys who line up with Brody or, uh, Bray. It's going to be the older guys and the younger guys, and then Alan yeah. Angels is just going to be in the middle. It'll be fun. I'm not going to lie. Uh, yeah. and, and I'm wrong. There is one other name um, that has not been mentioned, and that is Buddy. Buddy Matthews, formerly Buddy Murphy. He became uh, officially a free agent August 31st. Um, and uh, he he put out there that he's free. He's he's able to go. Uh, his so. minutes were good too. I mean, 
all that's of them. Josiah, are doing Josiah Williams is doing all those vignettes, right? I don't know if he is like the lead guy behind them, but I know he's been a part of all of them. And and Josiah Williams does tremendous work in just about everything he does. Yeah, he does a lot of really good work. I mean, if I was at AEW, I would have hired him right away. Yeah. Well, I wonder if maybe um, we had a lot of work with people who's, who are going to AEW and it's like, maybe he is working for him. We just don't know. Yeah. Or maybe it's definitely a freelance thing where he's getting paid, but he can also do his own stuff. Um, I'm not sure. Oh. I love Josiah Williams though. He is such a uh, nice human being and I just want the world for him. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think that is it. That's every match on the card that's been announced as of uh, Thursday, September the 2nd. Um, Mike, what do you think is going to be the best match of the night? I think the match of the night is going to end up being... Um, ooh, God, Young Bucks and Lucha Brothers. Uh, I'm well, such a fan of everything they do and everything Penta and Ray Phoenix does. Penta is just like this amazing character. Ray Phoenix is just so athletic. And then we know what the Young Bucks bring to the table. I think their match is going to be good. Great. I am, I am completely and totally in agreement with you. And I think any other night, that is the match. Mm-hmm. Um, but CM Punk is back in gear in Chicago against a guy who is going to make him look like a million bucks. Yeah. <laughs> Darby, CM Punk, I, I, I cannot wait to see what they do. I mean, Darby, the most over person in AEW until CM Punk got there. I mean, the crowd is going to be absolutely atomic for that match in Chicago. And it doesn't matter. It didn't matter who CM Punk was facing. They were going to get booed out of the building. Mm. But Darby Allen kind of embracing it uh, on social media, saying it doesn't matter who the crowd's cheering for. Uh, it's going to be him no matter what. Like, it's perfect. That's what that needs to be the mindset. I love it. I love all of this. I'm so excited. Um, AEW, man. Just makes you really They're enjoy being a wrestling fan. They're what we've needed. They, re, re, they rejuvenated my love for wrestling. Because um, I was really salarying on WWE outside of NXT. I mean, I da- I was starting to dabble in New Japan, and it probably would have stuck. But it's something that I can have here and go to their stuff and watch. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Speaking of God, I can't wait for that Roanoke show. Oh uh, no, it's not Roanoke. It's Norfolk. Well, that's even better. <laughs> that's even better. Let me tell you. Yeah, if you go to the Roanoke show, it's like you're driving to Tennessee. <laughs> Speaking of oh, Tennessee, perfect. how was uh, Next Generation Wrestling? Oh, my God. I love it. Give the fans a little preview of how you feel. I, well, hopefully hopefully everyone saw we did a uh, in-the-car review on our way home uh, that has hopefully already hit our YouTube channel. Um, I love Next Gen Wrestling uh, from Tennessee. Uh, Eddie and Cody run an incredible show, uh, and they hit just about everything I think we as fans asked for. We saw Moose versus Calvin Tankman tear the house down in a hoss fight. We saw Mance Warner versus uh, Stallion Rogers, formerly known as Kurt Stallion in NXT. Um, and that match was just incredible. Absolutely incredible. Um, Stallion Rogers is a, is a dude. I got to meet the Natty Daddy and have a beer with that guy. I love <laughs> Bradley Prescott the fourth to the point where my picture with him is currently my Facebook profile picture. I saw. <laughs> um, he's a dude, and and I'll tell you what too. We met him at the party bowl when we were helping set up the ring. Mm-hmm. Like chillest dude, yeah, chillest guy. Like I, I, I have yet. Uh, I know it's only been two times where I've come to Tennessee. I have yet to personally have a negative experience. Um, there, the majority of fans are incredible. I, I do have to say the majority because there was one fan who tried to get racist with uh, Trey Miguel and that did not fly. Um, but you know what? NGW, 
responded to people talking about it on Twitter and was like, hey, look, we are so sorry this happened. Um, uh, uh, that, that kind of stuff is not, you know, welcome. Uh, was it actually in the, like, the fans and they're attending? Yeah, there, there was one fan who was trying real hard. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, it, it, it was not great. Um, I, I hate saying it because of that fan. I missed Myron Reed running right next to me. So I'm a little salty wow. myself towards that fan. Myron Reed, Myron Reed. Okay, there's a clip on Twitter of him running and giving a cutter to Trey Miguel as he jumps over the top rope, hooks, and goes straight to the cement floor. Like, wow. It, it was a hell of a spot. Uh, that was Trey Miguel versus uh, Myron Reed versus Matt Cross. That was just absolutely incredible. Um, Davey Richards blue. versus Josh Alexander. Yeah. Oh, uh, God. Inject it. Inject it. That, okay. So, like, I, I had this conversation. Um, and that I think uh, that match was my favorite match of the night. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and, and it's hard to say because Stallion Rogers and Mance Warner beat the hell out of each other. And that match was so entertaining. Um, but, but here's my thing. It's so hard to have a technical wrestling match that keeps you on your toes and keeps you locked in. And you couldn't look away from Davey Richards versus Josh Alexander. I mean, these guys – Went to war and it was awesome. I saw y'all's picture with uh, Davy Richards and y'all all did the same pose. Oh, really like <laughs> um, I would love to see someone break the mold and point it like either you pointed at Jeff or Ryan and just <laughs> that would have made me laugh. Hey man, you don't know where I was pointing. It was somewhere over here. <laughs> <laughs> if Davy um, was just pointing at everyone next to him. <laughs> uh, okay, so I I, I will start my, my wrap up here because I could go on about next gen wrestling for a very long time. Their next show is Halloween night uh, in Jackson terminal in, in Knoxville. So same location as party bowl and on civil war six. And it's going to be, I, I, I think it's hosted or at least is uh, uh, going to have Dan Housen on the show. And, and if you're a long time viewer, you guys know, I love that Dan Housen. Um, oh, yes. Yes. Dan Housen. Yeah. Very good, very evil. Um, Matt Housen loves Dan Housen. Matt Housen loves Dan Housen, um, and that was uh, that was very exciting. I got put in my PTO to make sure I'm good. Yeah. Uh, so I can head over there. And uh, I, I was I told, I was told, uh, we're gonna want to keep an eye on their November show. November so, show. November Dang show. It. As long as it is not November thirteenth or fourteenth. I'm there. Was told just keep an eye on the November show. Typically, that they're about a month. So, uh, if, if October 31st, I'd imagine we're talking maybe Thanksgiving weekend. Okay, cool. I'm not po- cool. I'm not positive. I do not know that for certain. I really want to emphasize. I do not know that for fact. I do not. I might, but we're going to keep an eye out for the show. Uh, that's the yeah. one I'll probably make it to then. Um, November 13th, I'm competing in a powerlifting competition, so I wouldn't yeah. be there. But, Get you in there with uh, with Calvin Tankman. Oh, God. Or just have me share so, a beer with the Natty their, Batty. Their chops. I, I thought it was going to cave in my chest from across the arena. Like, they they went in. NGW, top-notch shows, always. Um, I've yet to see a bad one. If you haven't seen one or you haven't heard me talk about them, um, because I guess you might be new to the channel. We have interviews with the guys who run the shows, obviously, on our YouTube channel, uh, on our Facebook. Uh, these guys rule. Cody and Eddie are top-notch people in general, not just not just bookers, not just uh, uh, promoters, top-notch people. They really, they really put a lot of love into their craft. They really put a lot of heart in what they do, and they really put an effort into making sure wrestlers are paid and putting on as great a show for their fans. Um. And they let some schmucks like us uh, come and help out. <laughs> so, uh, NGW, man, if you can't see any of their shows live, High Spot Network, they got you. Go back, watch on Civil War coming out here probably uh, either today or tomorrow, I would imagine, uh, over there. Party Bowl was fantastic. Uh, in fact, we'll do this. We'll do this. If you can get a screenshot 
of someone in PWO on high spots, I will buy you a t-shirt, a, a podcast world order t-shirt. I'll do that right here. That for me too? Yeah, sure. Oh, you already know what shirt I'm going to want. I know, the one that I designed. <laughs> yep. Uh, so guys, we, we have uh, detoured a little bit here all out this weekend. Uh, obviously, Rampage tomorrow. Wonderful, wonderful shows by AEW coming up. Uh, independent wrestling scene. Support it. Stay safe. Get out there. Enjoy wrestling. Keep an eye on our channel here. A lot of fun stuff happening. Uh, and, of course, Monday will be our live uh, uh, podcast show where we are going to talk about all, all Out. <laughs> and we're going to hopefully have some information to talk about there as well as maybe some shoot fighting from last uh, Monday Night Raw. You never know what we're going to talk about, but there's a whole lot. So, guys, stay safe. Uh, have fun this weekend. Um, if you can, pay Lou Malnati's for some pizza to get shipped to you. Oh, yeah. Because your boys here have some Lou Malnati's getting shipped to them just in time for All Out. Very I did fun. It once. I did it once during the pandemic. Best idea ever. I can't wait. I genuinely cannot wait. Shout out to Lou Mountain Eyes and Taste of Chicago as well. So, guys, we'll see you soon. Check out the rest of the content. Stay safe. Enjoy wrestling. Good night. Goodbye. Bang.